Hello, uh, I'm here today for uh, Patreon.com uh, forward slash Cooking with Blues, Daddy Jack. Uh, uh, I'm doing a, a recipe tonight that is going to be hanging, uh, hanger steak or hanging steak. Uh, I, I have one here, a whole one. Um, it's, a, it's an economical cut of meat. Uh, it's it's the, the muscle that uh, controls the diaphragm of the animal. Um, it's sometimes called the hanging tenderloin because it's so tender. It's it's not well known. It's uh, not a designer cut like a ribeye or a, you know a sirloin or strip or whatever. It's uh, it's one of the. It's also called butcher steak because the butchers typically held these back for themselves. It's known as bistro steak in Europe, and what it. Uh, there's a lot of uh, trim on it, uh, but it's very cheap. I, I bought this yesterday for three dollars and forty cents a pound, and it will once it's trimmed and properly cooked, it uh, I'll take it over tenderloin any day uh, as far as its tenderness and and uh, flavor. And the flavor is built because, like I say, it controls the diaphragm, which is the the skirt state, the muscle that makes the animal breathe. So it's constantly twenty four hours a day working, which which it comes off the plate of the animal, which is where you would find bacon on a um, on a pig. It's uh, it's it's in this area here behind the brisket, below the chuck. And uh, so let's I'm gonna show you how to break it down. You can see here there's a there's a big side and a small side to it, and what runs right down the center of it here is a membrane that's inedible, and that membrane actually has a nerve in it so, it so what you want to do is with your hands you just pull off you can see how you know it's there's a lot of uh, this stuff on here all this that you wouldn't eat you, you wouldn't want to eat um, you don't throw that away though because you can get that in uh, in a pan and caramelize it and make just excellent beef stock out of it and so you just what you're trying to do right here is you're trying to expose the membrane and there you can see it right there that's the membrane so what we'll do is we'll get to it here and take your knife very very sharp knife and you just run you're not cutting you're just pulling it open and you then with your fingers you expose it so you're not cutting through it but you did cut into the meat yes you cut into the meat to so you can expose the membrane and then when you get it right there you cut up you see what we're doing here mm -hmm. and then you don't you use your knife as a in, in the way it's designed uh, mechanically in other words you don't go like this you hack the meat apart you go in a this motion right here so you start cutting with your knife about here and you finish here you might have to reset a couple times that's basically how you do it. And you, you, you cut and you pull at the same time. Away from your hand. Always cut away. That way if you do slip, and there's, the, there's part of the membrane right there. You, you, could, there, you can't even hardly cut that. Um, and then you just dig down in there further because uh, the, the membrane's quite deep into the meat. And it's it's stronger down here on this end. This end connects to the very last rib. This end connects to uh, the number one, two, and three lumbar vertebrae. Move back, Judy. And I've just about got it all right here exposed. So I'm just gonna keep cutting, keep pulling. Let your knife and the weight of the meat do the work. But by what I mean by the weight of the meat is when you cut in, this membrane weighs less than the meat does. So you help it along like that and you pull. You cut and pull. And that's gonna get it right here, I'm pretty sure. We might have a little bit to go here just a second. So what you do now is you, gonna need a little help here. See how that works? Now you got two, so you gotta make it pretty. And that's the way you do it. You just put your knife under and then cut back the other way. 
and you cut and trim them very closely because you don't you well you just don't want to waste the meat mainly. I like to leave a little of the fat on mine because uh, it's just flavor. And deliciousness. And what? In deliciousness. Do you remember what you call the fat that we cook in the pan? Mm -hmm. What? These hands. Great tan. See, it. fat like this, these these pieces, it, it's going to melt off anyway, and that'll just put more flavor in the pan. Uh, we're going to make a pan sauce with this, so all those little pieces of fine that get stuck on the bottom of the pan are just going to add to the flavor. But fat like this, um, it's probably not a good idea to keep that on there. Um, it'll be, it probably won't melt off. And uh, it'll it'll uh, it'll just be tough to eat. But see, this is this is another piece of that fat I'm talking about. I'll take that off just because it's sticking out. But there's nothing wrong with that. Not and then I'm going to square this up, face it off as it's called, because I'm going to uh, make some stock out of the trim. And uh, that's basically what you've got left of this half. You could you could roll it and tie it and make a real nice baseball cut, or that's not what we're gonna to do today. Today, we're gonna to, uh, cut it up into individual, little smaller steaks, but let me trim the, this other half here. I'll do this pretty much the same thing. Just find the fat, go under it, pull it, try not to cut into the meat, and just clean it up real nice where it looks good, and uh, you think it's gonna be tasty? And there's going to be a lot of gratins. There's going to be a lot of gratins? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we'll be right back. See, this is uh, the what's left of the hanger steak, what we what cleaned up. This is the trim we had, which, like I said, there's quite a bit. There's a lot of good meat in there, though. Um, if, if you can make stock out of this. Look at that's. I mean, it, it's not pretty, but it's it, it, it it's going to make a really nice uh, stock that I'll make uh, probably later this week. And what I'm going to season it up with is just something just simple, just salt. Coarse ground kosher salt is all I use. Uh, fresh ground black pepper and Daddy Jack's blackened seasoning. Uh, you can pick this up on uh, Daddy Jack's New London.com, I believe. Because remember, Billy on there, you know, shirts, hats. Um, and this blackened seasoning, which is excellent, I use it as an all purpose seasoning on everything, not just to blacken it. I use it just um, on everything. In fact, I'm fixing to order some because it be a good stock and stuff, I guess. Uh, and while, when we come back in just a minute, I'm gonna start cooking the steak, but I'm also cooking the side. And it, it's going to be a, uh, the side, this is gonna have a sauce, a cream sauce on it, uh, when it's said and done, but it's gonna be served over um, an onion croquette, onion patty. Uh, Amish have a, have a way they do theirs. And what I'm gonna do is, I've, what I've got in here in the batter, it doesn't have the milk in it yet. This is three quarters of a cup of just all-purpose flour. It's uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, not baking soda. It's got a teaspoon of sugar, and uh, that's I guess I guess that's it. Uh, salt, and pepper, and uh, I've caramelized my onions. Uh, traditionally, this dish isn't served with caramelized onions, but I thought that'd be a little bit loud. Um, and coarse, because I want this to be about more of the flavor of the meat as well as the cream sauce that I'm putting on it. So we'll be back in a minute when we get the stove gets hot and uh, we'll finish it up. Okay, we're ready for the, uh, the last part. Uh, just, we're gonna finish the steak. We're gonna make the uh, caramel, caramelized onion uh, croquettes, patties. Um, I went ahead and mixed everything together here and I'm gonna put a little bit of dry sherry into the, into the mix. You could put balsamic, that would be good, um, but uh, Winchestershire sauce, Winchester sauce as I call it, you can put that in there. But I think in this case, the, the sherry is really gonna add a, a, a I wish I had some uh, anise, uh, we call uh, um, the, uh, there's a liqueur, I can't recall the name of it right off the top of my head, but it's, uh, it's made with anise. Have your pan hot, waiting on you. Put your oil, that's a mix of salad oil and uh, regular olive oil, not extra virgin olive oil, extra olive oil with a little scorch in this case. Um, put your butter in. When you listen to the butter, you, you can hear it 
what that's what that is, is aside from melting is that's water cooking out of the butter so you want to wait till that goes quiet and then you know your pan's hot enough same over here this is a wagger by the way cast iron it was probably made just by the numbers on it it was probably made in about 1915 1920 right in there i collect them uh, wagner and griswold wagner winner so the steak is ready uh, you saw me season it up earlier it's still bubbling just a little bit it's getting quiet this one is quiet so the steak's going in it's a medium high heat I want to develop a crust on it, seal the juice inside of it, uh, and also develop the fond on the bottom of the pan because we're going to deglaze that after the steak is done and resting. And we're going to deglaze it with, uh, and we're going to add some shallot. The sauce that I'm going to make out of it is, well, in fact, let's go over here and I'll start cutting up. Uh, this is basically a, uh, a sauce Diane, but it's, it's done my way, which I leave, in this case, I leave the uh, mushrooms out of it. I want this to be a smoother sauce, uh, and you don't really have to worry a lot on these on these uh, shallots here uh, about the trim. You know what you're pulling off of them because all of this goes directly into a bag that I keep in the freezer, and that is what makes my stock all week: onions, celery, carrots, uh, leek, whatever you have. I have some leek here, and then you just uh, go through it a few times. And it, when you make your stock uh, with all these trim and your chicken bones or beef bones or whatever, in this case, the bones that we took off the steak, what you would do, uh, you, you make your stock, you cool it, you put it in a, under refrigeration, you defat it, take the fat off of it, use that in your cooking too. Uh, it's full flavor. There's nothing better than, than potatoes roasted in beef fat. And, uh, and if you want to go this far, you can even freeze your stock in the ice cube trays each one of those ice cubes weighs one ounce, so the recipe calls for a cup of, uh, of stock. Just grab eight ice cubes, you know, keep them in a the gallon bag and rotate them back around. So I'll cut the shallot up. Nothing goes to waste. All this trim right here, along with the, the beef trim from earlier, this, the, the outside edges, this, this leak has already been cleaned. It's full of sand, it's already cleaned. All that goes into a... Uh, your stock, even this end piece right here. This is how you cut it. If you just go through it a few times, then rotate it 90 degrees and go through it a couple times. And then that all goes in the stock pot. We'll save this. I went out in the garden just now and got some green onions for Jack and some flat parsley that we're gonna garnish with. And so we go back over here and we always have your, uh, you know, your don't drop water in the hot fat, by the way. Um, and then we'll make a couple of these pancakes. And that's basically what this is, is pancake. I call it a croquette, but it's just a, it's an onion pancake. So what's in there? This is um, <clears throat> flour, baking powder, salt, sugar, pepper, and caramelized onions, as well as dry sherry. And the, the oil, is uh, just the, the mix I was talking about plus butter. And that's gonna take a minute to cook. That's good though, because we're getting ready to flip the meat to what kind of color polarization we have on it. And look at that, that's perfect. So we'll get it to this point, And then we will, you wanna baste a little bit with your the, the flavor that's coming off of it. Uh, hanger steak is a very loose grain piece of meat. It's similar to a chuck eye. Again, it's not a designer cut. Uh, let me show you a trick. Uh, when your steak's like this, push it over to the edge of the pan. The edge of the pan will cook the outside edge of that steak, put color on it, to develop more flavor. That's what's so great about these Winco, the commercial utensils. Uh, <clears throat> you can't hurt them. They, they conduct radiated heat so well, transfer heat. And uh, <clears throat> so this, give it a couple shakes. When you see air pockets coming through it, air bubbles, I mean to say, that's, that's how you know it's about ready to flip. Um, but that's uh, th these second 
second cuts. They're like the collet steak, which comes off the collet uh, roast, which is the back of the sirloin. The collet steak is a delicious, unheard of, you know, by most people, um, restaurants anyway, as well as the Denver steak, uh, which which is at the back of the neck, in front of the chuck. At the very end of the ribeyes, where the chuck starts, there's about three steaks right there, there's three quarters, three or four, that are known as uh, chuck eye steaks, poor man's ribeye, some people call them. Well, right in front of that, there's one steak, slightly in front of it and down, lower towards the neck, there's one steak known as Denver cut. All of these are great cuts. The uh, the chuck eye is also, chuck eye steak is also known uh, as uh, Delmonico steak. It's merchandised and they put different names on it, but it's still an absolutely delicious steak as this one here is. And uh, of course my cake came out really, really nice. You can't beat these cast iron pans. You, you can see, you know, it's just as done here as it is here, as it is here. They, it just transfers heat so well. Clean up a little bit, and then we'll move our steak again. This color on that side. We'll put it over here. And I test steak just by the feel of it. I don't pimp it. Um, there's a, you know, the that's rare, that's medium rare, that's well, and it's on the rare side right now. Baked a little bit more. Uh, and I tell you what, we'll get this just a little bit closer. Maybe we'll be off camera for maybe a minute, 90 seconds, and we'll be right back. The, uh, the steak is just, it's right in medium rare. It, it's probably just on the, on the left side of the, the rare side of mid rare. And we're we'll gonna go ahead and pull it, because it's gonna cook up. And what we'll do is we'll pull it off. We got really nice um, caramelization, a lot of good color on it. And so now, what we're going to do, we don't need all this oil in the pan to make our stock. Uh, I don't like greasy sauces. So we'll dab some of this out. We need a little bit, but I don't like greasy, nasty sauces. So we'll do this. We will deglaze with a little white wine. That'll burn off real fast. We'll add more fresh butter into the pan. Just for our shallot, leek, and we need a wooden spoon to get all that goodness off the bottom. That's that's all the flavor. It'll come right off. You don't even have to do, you know, of course this is not a non stick pan, but uh, if you've got enough heat and enough acid from either your wine or lemon juice or wherever you, vinegar, wherever you get your acid from, um, it will come right up. So at that point, what we'll do is we'll take the over here, put our shallot, put our leeks, and I made some um, garlic paste, just a little bit. Uh, we'll put that in there. We'll cook this down for just a minute, and it will uh, it'll start coming together. There's so much residual heat in that pan. I'd turn the heat down a little bit. Um, move this over here. And uh, don't be an amateur. Keep your plates in the oven at 160, 70 degrees and keep them, keep them warm. Uh, because what we're gonna do with this steak, we're gonna slice it in pieces. You don't wanna go too thin because if you go too thin, it loses all its heat and gets cold by the time you eat it. So you go about that thick, you slice it first, and uh, uh, that way it'll, 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 it'll hold together. Um, I'm trying to, trying to stay ahead of myself. Uh, so that's probably about right there. And so what we'll do, we'll add some lemon juice and a little twist I like to put on this cream sauce is Dijon. Don't need too much. Remember, this is enough sauce here for three or four, por four portions, three or four portions. A little cream in it. And the mustard will deepen the color as well as the fine that you brought off the bottom of it. I was going to put um, 
brandy in this, but I decided not to. I didn't want. I thought it might be just a little too assertive. I wanted. I, I want this to be more about the meat. So I slowed it down and just put white wine in it. And the sauce will. Uh, it's actually running a little slower than I thought. So we'll let this thicken down, and I'll show you what it looks like when it gets to the right viscosity. The right okay. Uh, the last thing the sauce is finished. I did add one thing. I added a little bit of uh, tarragon in it. Uh, I know that's one of Jack's favorite. Um, herbs so i put that in there and what i just did there is i added some butter and that's called mounting the sauce what it'll do is it'll add a sheen to it and it'll tighten it up now you can see move over here uh you can see this the, the consistency of that sauce there's no 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 flour there's no potato starch there's no arrowroot there's no the only thickening agent that's in this is through reduction. So the idea is, if you've got this much of something and you want to reduce it to that much, you can't season it for that much. You have to, up here, you have to season because you, the, with the, the concentration of the volume goes down. So you have to season on the front end what you want it to become. You don't like to eat raw salt. You put salt in in the front end. You gotta remember salt is not a, uh, it's not a spice, it's a mineral. It doesn't go away, it just intensifies. So what we'll do is we will carve the meat and hanger steak has a very distinct uh, pattern to it. So we'll go across the grain. We'll see how we did on the cook. That's pretty good. And then again, like I said, we'll, we'll go in the larger um, thickness. And not only is it medium rare, if you'll notice, it's medium rare all the way to the edge, not right in the center, all the way to the edge. That's uh, how you know you've cooked it properly. So this one we'll put, let's just say four pieces. So we will come over here and we will grab our hot warm plate. I like the texture. I'll we'll put most of the sauce on the bottom. Uh, that's what the, uh, the onion Croquette uh, is for. You'll soak all that up. It'll look real nice. We'll come over here. Place our meat. That. And, and if you want to see just this end cut, look at that. That's how tender this meat is. Uh, it, 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 uh, it's as tender as tenderloin, and it's three dollars and forty cents a pound. Yeah, you trim and you lose maybe twenty-five percent, but you don't throw it away. You make stock out of it. Don't throw anything away. All the shells off all these vegetables, they, they're all in the freezer. Uh, nothing gets thrown away except what's inedible, and that's not much. And then I'll put a little bit more sauce right here just to make it look a little better, and. Uh, of course, flat parsley has to be on everything I cook. And a little bit of green onion. And top it right off just for a little bit more color. Some of Jack's, uh, Daddy Jack's blackening seasoning. Uh, just give it a better, give it, put that red color on it, make it look real nice. And there you have it. There is a uh, hanger steak with an Amish, caramelized onion croquette with my version of a sauce Diane. Uh, the, the version is I have lemon juice and I have uh, Dijon and I will make the mushrooms in this case. And Jack, hopefully you continue to feel better. And y'all check out patreon.com forward slash cooking with the blues. Jack has, there's exclusive content on there. Uh, it's cheap to join. I mean, literally, if you'll just not go to McDonald's, one time a month and take that $10 and send it to Jack. You'll get full access to this. He'll teach you how to cook. You'll have access to music. Uh, he's uh, producing some music right on blues music. He sent, he sent me some from here in Dallas. It's really nice stuff. And if y'all will uh, check it out, the black and season is delicious. It makes great stocking stuff. I, I don't know what, they, I think he's got a deal right now where it's 20 or 25% off. Uh, so check it out and thanks a lot.